Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Uh, today I want to show you how I made these rustic kitchen table legs. And the, it's, a, it's all just construction grade 6x6. Six six. And I, I did some of my first large um, wedge mortises, which I made mistakes on. And I'll show you the mistakes and I'll show you how I attempted to fix them. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it, and I'm looking forward to putting the epoxy table on the top. So let me show you how I did it. We're going to make some uh, wedge mortises, and we're going to turn this into some nice table legs. I start off by marking all the mortises, and I make quick work of them with the whole hog and a large Forstner bit, and then chisel them all out. It took a little while to chisel them all out. Um, because I had four of them and they were five and a half inches deep, but I managed to managed to get them done. And they were pretty rough right there, so I had to basically go in there with a rasp and, and a custom sanding block and clean them all up to where they're going to work a little nicer. I then make the tenon by using my skill saw and setting the depth of the material to be removed on each side. And I get, I cut all all the sides and one side was a little shallower than another side so I had to make sure that measurement was correct and once I got all those cut I then took them over to the bandsaw and started to cut them out. The bandsaw made pretty quick work of these big blocks and they ended up fitting pretty nice. Right here I decide I want the reveal to be a little smaller so I cut the two by six down or cut the six by six down and right there I'm finishing off the I'm cutting relief cuts in the tenon and um, that was my first mistake I made the the relief cuts too big in the tenons and you'll see when I glue it up what happens um, that jet mortiser made quick work of this this other mortise that I needed and then I made some uh, I made some wedges with walnut, and I basically cut the wedges on the bandsaw. I sanded everything up, and then I start and then I glued it all together. And here's where the mistake came in. I you can see the the tenons are just not tight enough in that square, and what happens is it. Um, it leaves too much gaps around the tenon and I ended up that was the mistake that I made and I ended up using some stuff called plastic um, plastic wood by DAP and it, it it fixed it but it it wasn't perfect so that was definitely a mistake I then proceeded to make the the large tenon that connects the two posts together and uh, that was a big, big tenon. It's basically two inches by six inch. And it came out really nice. I rounded over the edges of where it comes through and uh, softened it up with a sander. And I, I liked the way it turned out. It kind of had a cool look to it, I thought. Remember, I'm kind of, I'm going for rustic. And right here, I run that big giant tenon through the joiner and it fit perfectly. Any bigger, it wouldn't have worked. Um, the Grizzly 6-inch joiner with the new dust collection is really working good. I'm hardly getting anything uh, flying out of it. And anyway, that made quick work of, of cleaning all the edges up. And then I take it over to uh, my router and I round, soften up the edges with a little, a little quarter round bit. And that, uh, that softened it up real nice. Here's what it looks like, and then I proceed to put five, or I stain it, and then I put five coats of polyurethane on it, and here's how it ended up. Thanks for watching this episode of Outlaw Woodworking. Every, every day is a learning experience, and thanks for watching. Please subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already.